The championship promotion race is actually insane. This is what the championship table looked like on Easter Sunday. Well, believe it or not, the top three all picked up massive wins against fellow promotion chasing outfits. The next six sides all failed to win, five of the six losing on Easter Monday, and then three of the next four teams picked up wins to keep alive their faint playoff hopes. Today, we're gonna to talk about the championship promotion race as this is what the top end of the EFL championship table looks like right now as we have very few games to go. Welcome back to yet another video guys. As I say we are focusing on the championship promotion race which is actually insane and there's so many teams involved. We've got the playoff race and of course the top two race which is absolutely crazy. Before we get into the video guys of course share your thoughts down in the comments. Comment down below which team you support and how you think they're going to do come the end of the season because a lot of it is too close to call. Do make sure to drop a like on this video. We can easily go for 1,000 likes. Make sure you click the thumbs up button. It's free to do so make sure to do that now and make sure to subscribe Whether you're a Norwich fan, a Coventry fan, a Leicester fan, a Leeds fan, an Ipswich fan, a Southampton fan, a Hull fan, a Preston fan, a Championship fan Subscribe. It's free to do and you're helping this channel reach 62,000 subscribers now with all of that said Let's talk about the championship promotion race. So then, as I say, this is what the top end of the championship table now looks like after Easter Monday's games. And as you can see, most teams in the division have six games to go. A couple have seven and Southampton have eight. But this is what it looks like. And what are my early observations? Well, after the Easter weekend, I think we can say it's going to be two from three out of Ipswich, Leeds United and Leicester for the automatics. After the Easter weekend, I do think Southampton are out of the top two race. However, I don't see them falling out of the playoffs due to the amount of points they've picked up. So Southampton are a floater in the playoffs. You've then got West Brom downwards for fifth and sixth for me. Obviously, West Brom and Albion are in the strongest position and teams down in 10th and 11th have an outside chance, which isn't as good as the teams just above them, of course. So then, something I always quite like to look at is the upside for each of the championship teams. The most points they could get if they won all of their games. I'm not saying everyone's going to win all of their games. Of course, that won't happen but this is what the highest amount of points each team can get to and you get an idea of what it might take for certain objectives. Looking at that, Ipswich Town can get to 105 points, Leeds United can get to a possible 104 points, Leicester can actually get to 106 with their game in hand, Southampton as you can see a few points worse off, the highest they could get to is 98. After that you can see West Brom can get up to 86, Norwich 82 and so on and so forth. The reason I'm showing you this is not for the teams right at the top but for the teams sort of chasing for those objectives, whether it be top two or playoffs and we could start to rule out some teams from competing for those things so although Southampton can get 98 and that should be enough to get top two in most championship seasons it might not actually be enough in this season and that's if they won all of their games the same applies to the playoffs you could see Bristol City have been putting some good wins together recently but even if they won all of their remaining six games they can only get to a possible 71 points which might not be enough for sixth place anyway let's start with the automatic promotion race then before we come on to the playoffs and looking at the upside for these teams teams and the form that they're in. Let's see if we can make an educated guess on what it might take, how many points it might take to get into the top two come the end of the season. So the first thing is the standards are high. These three teams right at the top have been so good this season and it does seem harsh to see one of them not going up automatically. Each of the top three, in my opinion, with six or seven games to go, can likely afford one more defeat and possibly one more draw. Obviously, that all comes down to how the other teams perform. In my opinion, however, I reckon at least one of the top three will likely lose two. You've got three teams up here obviously doing so well this season but obviously only two of them can finish in the top two come the end of the season and I don't think it's unreasonable to think one might just drop a couple of results in the last few here and using Leeds United as the baseline with the lowest upside 99 points will likely be a requirement to make it. Now, as I say, this is not set in stone. Don't take my word for it and run away and tell everyone that you need 99 points. You might need 100 points, you might need 98, but that is an educated guess at looking at where we are right now. As I say, Leicester City with their game in hand have the highest upside. Ipswich Town would also be in the top two. Leeds United have the best goal difference, so that's something going for them. And when it comes to form, Leicester City's form is not the best out of the top three, even though they have the highest upside 
but then again they did get a great win against Norwich which might lift their confidence. We're going to come on to their fixtures next because they've all got some really difficult games in the final run in here. But before we do that let's just have a little look at what it would take for each of these teams to get to 99 points come the end of the season given the games they've got left. Ipswich Town I genuinely think four wins will do it. Four wins out of six will do it because that would take them to 99 points. If they draw one on top of that, that would take them to 100. And as I say, I think 100 is more than enough. 99 points is my rough guess. Leeds United would need four wins and one draw. Leicester City would need four wins and two draws as a minimum, but they have a game in hand. And as I say, there is that possibility it comes down to goal difference, in which case, as I say, Leeds United have the best, then Leicester, then Ipswich. So then, let's have a look at those remaining fixtures. And to be honest, they've all got some really difficult games, starting with Ipswich Town, who go away to Carrow Road. We all know how big a game that will be. Norwich City obviously want to stop Ipswich Town getting automatically promoted, but they have got something to compete for themselves. Themselves. Norwich obviously trying to stay in the top six. Ipswich Town have been fantastic this season but they still have that little bit of a curse that they haven't beaten Norwich in some time. Could they possibly do it at Carrow Road? It does feel like now is the best opportunity they could get. Then it's Watford at home which won't be straightforward and Middlesbrough at home which once again won't be straightforward. Those two have put some better performances together recently. And then it's away to Hull City and Coventry City who are chasing the playoffs before a home game against Huddersfield on the final day who could be fighting for survival. Just as we'd expect in the Championship, there's no easy games. But having said that, if I was an Ipswich fan, I'd think to myself, I think we can get four wins in there somewhere. None of those games are easy, as I say, but Ipswich Town are making some games look easy this season. So it's not impossible Ipswich Town can get over the line here. And then we look at Leeds United's fixtures. They've got Coventry away before home games against Sunderland and Blackburn. Then it's away to Middlesbrough and QPR before a home game against Southampton on the final day. Now, obviously, I'm not going to entirely rule out Southampton's chances just yet, but it does look very difficult to see them getting back into the equation. And it does look like the Leeds United-Southampton game might be a little bit of an anti-climax from Southampton's point of view, as they might not have a lot to play for. As for Leeds United, there could still be a lot riding on it. And if I was a Leeds United fan, looking at those games it's a mixed bunch I think QPR away Coventry away Middlesbrough away they're all games that could potentially trip Leeds United up I do like the home games I do think Leeds United given how good they've been at home this season could win three out of three of those home games and to be honest if I was a Leeds fan I think we could possibly win four or five out of six here and as I say that might be enough this season six wins out of six and I think that's more than enough Leeds fans share your thoughts on to Leicester City finally, they've got Birmingham City at home, then Millwall away, Plymouth away, West Brom at home, Southampton at home, Preston away and Blackburn at home. With the West Brom and Preston games, they're obviously trying to compete for the playoffs. Southampton, as we said, it could be a dead rubber there for Leicester. Birmingham, Millwall, Plymouth and Blackburn are all fighting for survival at the moment. So once again, there's no easy games there for Leicester. But I don't think those fixtures are necessarily the hardest. It's the busiest schedule, given that they've got an extra game compared to the other two here. But... I don't think it's unreasonable to think Leicester can win 5 out of 7 there. But if we're going to go off form though, Ipswich and Leeds have the better form at the moment. But as I say, Leicester's win against Norwich might just see them improve a bit as we go into the homeward stretch. There's really not a lot to separate them. Maybe Ipswich Town's fixtures are slightly the trickiest, but they've all got some tricky games in there somewhere. So really not a lot to separate those top three. Let's move on to the Championship playoff race next then, as that top two race is giving me a headache. Well, as I said, fifth and sixth for me are still potentially up for grabs. Southampton, for me, I think they've done enough. Even if they lost all of their games, they might find themselves still being in the top six come the end of the season. With West Bromwich Albion, we have said for a long while that they look fairly comfortable. Their last two games after the international break have been draws, but because Norwich and Coventry and Preston have dropped some points recently, they've got away with it a little bit and they might just find themselves just getting over the line. And when we come onto their fixtures, I think there's more than enough points to be won there for West Brom for them to secure their place. But we must emphasise that they've not made it just yet. And then when you come on to Norwich, despite losing to Leicester, it's still in their hands due to the fact everyone else below them seem to lose as well. So 
we're still in the same position when it comes to the playoff race. Let's have a little look at what it might take to get in there. The projection for sixth based on points per game from the entire season right now is 73.6 points. If we look at the projection for sixth place based on recent form though, based on the last six results for each of the teams in the championship, then you're looking at 76 points because Norwich have picked up 12 points in their last six and if they do that in their next six, it will obviously take them to 76 points. Me Meeting in the middle with that 73.6 and 76 and looking at the fixtures I think the middle ground being 75 points with a good goal difference is likely to secure sixth place this season therefore for me when you look at the upside Cardiff City and downwards will likely miss out. Cardiff still have a slight chance in my opinion but as I say they probably have to win all of their games. Once again I must emphasise don't take my word for gospel it's an educated guess that I think 75 points will just get you sixth but it might be 76 it might be 74. To get to 75 points anyway this is what each of these teams from fifth downwards would need to do. West Brom just need two more wins from their final six with one more draw on top of that to get to 75 points. Norwich would have to win three and get two draws or alternatively win four of their final six. Coventry City are going to have to just go for wins. Five wins from the final seven will get them in there. There's a little bit of margin for error to lose two out of seven but really do need to keep the standards high now. After that, you've got Preston, who need to win five and draw one. And obviously, we must point out their goal difference could be really crucial if they were to land level on points with someone. Then it's Middlesbrough, who'd need 17 points from their next six, which obviously you can't do other than going for six wins, which is actually 18 points. That's why I've put six wins, zero draws, zero defeats. Borough pretty much have to win every game, but they're not out of it yet. And then as for Hull City, it's got to be pretty flawless as well. Five wins and two draws from the last seven would get them to 75 points. So as we move on to the fixtures, I must say West Brom look like they're nearly there. Norwich look like they could be there. And it's a bit of a scramble with so many teams still in touching distance. We might find one team possibly coming out of nowhere to, to challenge right at the end, whether it be Coventry, Preston, Borough or Hull. Looking at the fixtures though, West Brom go away to Stoke City before home games against Rotherham and Sunderland. I do think looking at those next three games in particular, West Brom really could sew up their playoff place. If they could pick off two wins in that next three, which is not too difficult really for the Baggies, then they will surely secure their place. Otherwise, they go away to Leicester and Sheffield Wednesday, who've both got a lot to play for before hosting Preston on the final day, which could be a really tasty final couple games there for West Brom if they aren't to win many of their next three. Then it's Norwich City who, as we said, host Ipswich Town. It's a difficult game for Norwich, as we say, but it is a difficult game for Ipswich Town as well because Norwich have been really good and do have that great record against the Tractor Boys. Then it's back-to-back -back away trips to Sheffield Wednesday and Preston before home games against Bristol City and Swansea before finishing away at Birmingham. I look at those two home games against Bristol City and Swansea as a real opportunity for Norwich to pick up six points against two teams in the middle of the table, but they really could be banana skins because teams in the middle can still trip you up. As for Coventry City, there's seven games to go, but we must factor in an FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United as well. It's Leeds at home and Southampton away, which is not going to be straightforward, before Birmingham away and three home games in the final four, but they could be against teams fighting for a lot. Hull City, Ipswich Town and QPR and Blackburn away, they could be playing for something as well. It's not easy for Coventry, but I do think an all-out let's go for wins approach might possibly drag Coventry City into the equation. Obviously, if you look at the table, Norwich have that four point buffer but the game in hand really could be crucial for Coventry but they can't slip up like they did against Cardiff again they just can't the standards are too high for that and finally then let's look at these teams fixtures you've got Preston who go away to Watford host Huddersfield and Norwich go away to Southampton and QPR before hosting Leicester and going away to West Brom. It's a pretty difficult run there for Preston, but I must say facing West Brom and in particular Norwich could be games where Preston can take points off teams they're trying to chase and really drag themselves into it. Preston, I don't think they're out of it just yet. I know they did lose to Birmingham City away from home, which was disappointing, but I still think they've got a chance. As for Middlesbrough, as we said, they probably have to win six out of six. Well, they host Swansea, 
go away to Hull and Ipswich before hosting Leeds, going away to Cardiff and hosting Watford. There's a couple of tricky games in there for Middlesbrough. We must obviously point out Ipswich and Leeds are not going to be easy. Neither is Hull City away. Cardiff and Swansea and Watford could also trip up Middlesbrough. To be honest, if Middlesbrough can win five out of six, I still think they'd have a decent chance of making it. But as we said, they might have to go for six out of six. So we will see. As for Hull City, they go away to Cardiff and then they host Middlesbrough, which could be a game where the loser can't make the playoffs anymore. Then it's QPR at home before back-to-back -back away games at Watford and Coventry before Ipswich at home and Plymouth away. Plenty of games against teams that have got a lot to play for there. Hull City, they've got a bit of catching up to do now, but they have got Leeds United out the way. And you look at some of those games for Hull, some of them are winnable, but they've got to start winning now. So then, that wraps up the remaining fixtures for the teams in the top 10. As I say, Cardiff City, they could still mathematically make it and we'll give them credit for beating Coventry yesterday. Hull City and Middlesbrough, it looks difficult to see them making it, but they're not out of it. Same for Preston and Coventry. And to be honest, with, with there being four teams that still have a chance, I think at least one or two of them could still put the pressure on Norwich and pick up some wins in the next couple of games. I do think West Brom will probably make it, but as I say, until they get to 75 points, I'm not going to say that they're definitely there yet. And I think we can rule Southampton out of the top two race. And honestly, picking two of that top three to go up is becoming too difficult now. I did say a few weeks ago, I'm looking at Leeds and Leicester. But honestly, I don't want to rule out Ipswich anymore. And what a story it would be to see Ipswich Town do it. I still have a strong feeling Leeds United get in there. But as I say, I mean... None of these top three can afford to lose two games for me. I think that would be their downfall. I think you'd miss out on the top two if you lose two more games. So so it's, like I say, it's unbelievably close to call. You, you can't pick it. It's like being told to pick your two favourite kids if you've got three children. It's... It, what's the point? <laughs> it's just too close. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments. We will keep analysing it. We will keep looking at it. As I say for now, I think 99 points will probably get top two, 75 points for sixth place. But let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed the video, as I say, drop a like. It's massively appreciated when you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. As I say, it's free to do that. And we'll keep you abreast of the championship action. Sophie and I will be back with championship predictions for the weekend tomorrow. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.